The Scorpion helmet mounted queuing system is a dramatic improvement in pilot situational awareness. It features a combination of the tactical awareness display TAD, and the heads up display or HUD to give video game levels of icons and information overlaid on the pilot's line of sight. Today we'll go over all its features as is at release. We need to ensure the helmet is powered up by looking at the back of our right hand panel, flick the switch to the on position and we're good to go. When we look away from the HUD, we'll see the helmet sight. Holding DMS left will toggle the helmet off if you need a clear view without all the symbology. Holding DMS left again will restore it. Let's look at the symbology. At the top we've got the heading our head is looking. The helmet elevation lines indicating the degrees up or down we are looking. Our horizon line, when this is outside the display it'll be dashed. Indicated airspeed, barometric altitude and the radar altitude. And lastly our heading of our own aircraft. X's will show on the radar altimeter if we're too high for a radar altimeter return. We can set the helmet to sensor of interest by cycling our cooling hat up twice. The first press will set our HUD as soy, and then further presses will toggle between our HUD and the helmet. With our helmet set as soy, we'll see a small asterisk enabling HOTAS controls. Pressing DMS up or down will increase or decrease the brightness respectively. Inside the display, we've got the crosshair. Just like the HUD, we also have a cursor, the helmet designation cursor. When the cursor is caged, we will see the crosshair features crossbars on each end. We can uncage the cursor by slewing away with our HOTAS slew. This changes the crosshair to a plus and reveals the box corners of the helmet designation queue. The HDC will ground stabilize automatically once slewed over the ground and remain there, detached from our helmet. This is a great tool for marking locations which we will use later. You should note if the HDC is off the screen there is no indication of direction so it's very easy to lose or forget that it is uncaged. Pressing China hat aft short will recage our cursor, represented by the crossbars on our crosshair. Drawn out from the crosshair we will have one of two coloured lines. The green line always points towards our SPI, sensor point of interest, and as we look away, the line will extend and start showing progressively more dashed notches representing the angle off from our line of sight. A second yellow line is present whenever we have an object hooked with the helmet sight. This does not include objects hooked from our TAD. Alright, so that's the basics of what's shown on the helmet itself. Now remember how I said this is a situational awareness monster? Well. Okay, so there's a lot to break down here. This should be mostly familiar to you from the TAD and TGP, however. So let's go over all the objects placed within the world visible through the helmet. First, we've got nav points. These are boxes with dots in the center, with the name of the navigation point written in blue below. These include our waypoints and mark points. Our currently selected nav point will appear yellow, whilst all others will be green. Second, we've got friendly ground forces equipped with data link, shown as an X. Remember that not all friendly forces carry data link. Friendly aircraft compatible with the data link will also show up as the green PPLI or Precise Participant Location and Identification. This is a circle with a distance to them in nautical miles shown below. Aircraft within our own flight on the same data link net will show up as blue, with their aircraft number in the centre. This means you've got no excuse if you manage to lose your flight lead. The location of this marker updates in time with the refresh rate of our data link network, and so appears to fall behind the aircraft. Note that hostile aircraft detected by AWACS are not displayed, and it's up to debate if this feature will be added later. The wedding cake symbol shows the location of sensor points of interest. A white SPI indicates our own aircraft SPI, whilst a blue SPI is being broadcast from our wingman's aircraft. The top number is the range, with the centre being our wingman's number. Green speeds are broadcast from friendly flights which are not part of your network. If you wish to broadcast your own speed, you need to set this by long pressing TMS left. You can see the status of your speed broadcast on the TAD page. Our targeting pod is shown with the TGP diamond. In addition we've got the field of view that our pod can see with a dashed box. This will resize to correspond with the video feed on our display. 
we can display the targeting pods video directly on the helmet by pressing DMS left short. This can be a little difficult to read and I've found using the IR mode makes it easier to use. It's likely in the future we'll see this image being superimposed on top of the TDC field of view when within the helmet sight, but for now it's limited to just our helmet. Alright, so now we know what we're looking at, let's interact with it. First we will ensure that the helmet is soy and that our cursor is caged with China hat aft. Whenever we place the crosshair over an object we'll get information about it in the bottom left. We can press TMS up short to hook it, which draws a dashed box around the object and enables the yellow directional cue to it. Now the information presented bottom left remains on screen even if we look away. This shows us the heading to it, the range in nautical miles, barometric altitude, and if available it'll even tell us what type of unit it is. With any object hooked we can press TMS up long to set our speed onto the hooked object. TMS down will unhook and if a speed is set onto the object we had hooked it will return to our selected waypoint. We can also set a speed on any object by just looking at it and holding TMS up without hooking the object. You must use the crosshair to hook objects as the helmet designation cue cannot be used to hook, although interestingly you can hook the HTC itself if you desire. Let's now use our helmet to cue our targeting pod. If we look at any point on the ground we can press and hold TMS up. This will place our SPI onto that point. Alternatively if we recage with China hat R short we could use the slew control to select a location and hold TMS up to set our SPI there. With our SPI set over a point of interest we can then slave our targeting pod to it by pressing and holding China hat aft. Remember that you can also use hooked objects to set our SPI and in turn slave the targeting pod onto them. Next let's talk about mark points, we'll recage the cursor with China hat aft short and use TMS down to unhook. Just like on our targeting pod pressing TMS right short will create a new mark point. If we press it with nothing hooked and a cage sensor we'll create a mark point directly under our crosshair. If we slew the HDC out however it will be created on the cursor instead. You might notice that we've only got the most recent mark point showing. If we go back into the cockpit below our CDU and switch our steer point knob to the mark position we'll now see all created mark points and our waypoints will be hidden. If you spent a little while tagging out hostile units this can give you a great picture of known threats. We can press DMS right long to slave our targeting pod to the helmet's line of sight or helmet queue. This feature does not appear to be ready just yet however as the pod will not enter into a ground stabilized mode often slewing away on its own. You also need the pod to not be slaved to anything otherwise the slaving will override your command. This command is global so you can have your targeting pod as soy, use DMS right along to slave our pod to our helmet's line of sight and then we will hit the slew control to stabilize it immediately and we can use this as an alternative to slaving to a SPI after it is set by the helmet. Let's look at a combat example of targeting a sudden threat. Once an enemy has revealed themselves we simply look at them and either create a mark point or SPI. We will then press and hold China hat aft to slave our targeting pod onto the SPI. If you used a mark point you can of course hook it or select it with the HUD when steer points are set to mark points. And then we can set it as our SPI. With our pod looking at the new threat we're in a great position to engage it. So this is pretty awesome right? There is one limitation however, when looking forwards our helmet sight will hide in favour of the HUD. Technically the helmet still functions just the same, it's just invisible, but we can in fact fix that by editing our helmet's profiles. We can cycle through the display profiles with DMS right. The default profiles serve to effectively declutter the display, so let's set up our own. We can change our profiles and adjust the display settings to our liking on our stat page on the right MFD by selecting HMCS. 
We can then select a profile from the top. The selected field is indicated by the pointer. Pressing the arrows on the side will increment our selected field up or down. Or we can jump down the table with the arrows on the right. We can then cycle options by pressing the on-screen button below, which will cycle between occludable, on and off, or special options. Elements set to occludable will automatically disappear when you look forwards towards our HUD or down inside the cockpit. Switching them to on, however, will ensure that they stay on in all orientations, whilst off will remove them in all situations. Some fields have a display cutoff range we can adjust. Enter the new value into the scratch pad from either the HUD or the CDU, and then press the range button to set the new value. The objects will only show on the helmet if they are within the nautical mile range set here. Not all fields are functional, either being software future-proofing or unavailable. You can see a full list of these functions in the manual on page 406. We can also select inertial stabilised area or point tracks. I believe this is a default targeting pod mode used with the line of sight slave, but lacking documentation I'm uncertain, in either case it doesn't appear to do anything at the moment. Below that, we've got our night or day brightness presets on the side. I'd personally just leave this on day and use the DMS up and down to adjust. We'll quickly set up our profile so that our crosshair, our own SPI and the HDC are all shown at all times with the on setting. Now we can easily designate for our own HUD with a helmet, as well as see any other enabled elements through the cockpit. I'd recommend setting up a profile for this purpose. Unfortunately, changes to these settings are not saved, and must be reconfigured every time you start a new aircraft. Hopefully in the future we'll see a data cartridge system added to save personal options. I've talked with Eagle Dynamics about the possibility of having the ability to save your profiles added. This might come in the form of Lua editing for the time being, however. Lastly, I wanted to bring up a few common mistakes. It's very easy to forget about your helmet queue. If you attempt to create a mark point with the queue off the helmet screen, it will be created on the edge of your display, not on the crosshair as you might have hoped for. If you are attempting to create a SPI with the helmet crosshair or queue, and find yourself unable to, you've most likely managed to hook an object and left it hooked off screen, so you're actually setting the SPI on that hooked object. In most cases, if you're having difficulty, simply check the helmet is soy, Cage the cursor with China Hat aft short, and press DMS down short to ensure you do not have anything hooked, and try again. Alright, so that is everything to the Scorpion helmet mounted queuing system for the Warthog 2. Hope you enjoyed, and happy hunting.